I don't know if you have done any work with the Enneagram. Honestly, I haven't done a lot, but I know enough to know that I'm a solid three. Now, if you don't know what that means, uh, you can look it up. You should look up your Enneagram number and we can compare it or you can put it in the comment section. I would love to know. We can learn more about each other. But what that means is a three is an achiever. And here's how that shows up in my life. Uh, I tend to be full of energy. I like to be competent at what I do. So I'm a learner. I'm always trying to learn new skills. And I am often fueled by ambition, meaning I like to win. <laughs> that's true. Anyone who's played any games with me knows that's true. And my husband will not play games with me because that is true. But it also means what often drives me is what people think about me, or um, I get a lot out of praise, that I seek praise, and I'm trying, and uh, another piece of that also means I'm always trying to reimagine or rethink things, that status quo isn't always the way I want it to be. Learn something, new something. So one of the things that drives me in life is the ta-da moment, right? We talk about this at my house. This is why I like to create things, or I like to bake. Um, is because there's this moment where you've accomplished something and you can feel like, ta-da, look what I made. Honestly. Right behind me, you can see one of my favorite Christmas activities. I love to put together the presents. I always have. When I was a kid, um, I actually helped build the playset that my nephews got for Christmas one year. I loved it when we would go visit them. My, um, my nephews are about nine, 11 years younger and I guess 14 years younger than me. And I loved to help put together their presents and my favorite part was putting the stickers on at the end. Whether it be a Lego set or whether it be like one of those big um, Fisher Price cars, whatever, right? to get it right and I can still in the back of my head hear my brother-in-law telling me that I did a good job right I've always been an achiever and so my fav one of my favorite things this time of season is to find the time to put something together you now it is so nice to get to that moment where you go ta-da right now um like yesterday Paul like Zechariah he tells us today in um in Philippians that he also is an achiever. He's done it all right. He has done the things that matter, right? And and um, the, here's the truth, right? Here's what he says, right? That he has he's obeyed the law. He is circumcised, which means that he is marked as a Jew. He even followed the law to a T to the point where he was persecuting Christians. But when he met Jesus in the flesh, it changed everything. So Paul writes these words to the Philippians. He says, all these things I've accomplished, I thought were my assets, but I have written them off as a loss for the sake of Christ. But even beyond that, I consider everything a loss in comparison with the superior value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have lost everything for him, but what I lost, I think of as sewer trash so that I might gain Christ and be found in him. In Christ, I have a righteousness that is not my own, that does not come from the law, but rather from the faithfulness of Christ. It is the righteousness of God that is based on faith. The righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death so that I may perhaps reach the goal of resurrection of the dead. What Paul is saying is that for many years, he placed value on what he could accomplish. But once he knew Christ, he knew this, that it was Jesus who won his salvation, not himself. It wasn't getting it all right. It was putting his faith and trust in Christ, becoming a child of God, becoming a disciple. And what matters most is not what we accomplished, but what Jesus has accomplished for us. Not what we do well, but what Christ has done perfectly on the cross. And I love this. Paul goes even so far to say is the things that he accomplished, he now considers to be sewer trash. Now, the Greek word for that is not quite so nice. It actually means what we flush down the toilet. He says, it is not even worth, worth saying out loud what I think of it now, right? It is nothing as compared to what God has done for me through the power of his spirit. 
Friends, our value is not actually found in what we can accomplish and what we get right. Our value is found in being a child of God and taking our identity as one who has been redeemed by Christ on the cross and one in whom the Spirit dwells and delights. Right? It's only through God's Spirit that we boast. And I love this word boast. Right? When we think about boasting, we think about bragging. Like, my team won, or I beat you, or I can do this, or I have this. But what Paul is saying is that boasting is what keeps our head held high. What keeps your head held high? Because we don't win every day. We don't accomplish things all the time. Right? When we put our faith in Christ, we can always hold our head high because we know our value rests in what he has done and not what we have done. The true ta-da moment in the season, ta-da, is that that Christ child will again be in the manger on Christmas Eve. That Christ has come, that the spirit does dwell within us. Ta-da, the kingdom of heaven is close. It is at hand and it depends on me for nothing. I like Paul, you like Paul, we are but the lowly shepherds who are blessed simply by showing up. We get to be in the story of God and look how marvelous he is. Ta-da! I hope you will like this, share it, um, comment, tell me what, um, what your Enneagram number is and subscribe so that maybe someone else will receive this message of hope.